guys, R Pro here, and in this one I'm going to be showing you how to install a C++ compiler on your system. Now, afterwards I'll give a, a little more of a tutorial about why I'm doing this and everything, so but first I'm going to be showing you how to install the compiler, just in case you don't want to hear the intro, so that, that's up to you. So, I'm going to be focused on two different operating systems here. I'm going to be focused on Linux and Windows. Um, Unfortunately, I can't really do much for the Macintosh users out there because I don't own a Macintosh. I've never been able to own a Macintosh. So I can only give limited information at best. So I'm just not going to give any information on you Mac users out there. Uh, just to be on the safe side. So this will be focused on uh, Windows and Linux. Um, but basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to be installing G++ on both systems. And if you Mac users out there and want to uh, install G++ and follow along, um, all the programming uh, the programming language uh, is universal, so it should compile under Windows, Linux, and Mac, and all that. Um, and you should be able to actually install G++ and Mac, I do believe, but you'll have to do the research on how to do that. So first things first, we'll go ahead and tackle Linux because this is the uh, by far the easiest. And I'm using the Linux subsystem in Windows 10. It should be identically the same thing for you guys using the Linux out there. And all you have to do is open a terminal and type sudo apt get install build essential. And then type in your password. And I've already got it installed, but it should be asking you about a uh, about a size and you're asking if it's okay to continue and all that and if you've got the hard drive space to install it go ahead and hit uh, Y for yes and hit enter and once that's done that's it you can just simply type G++ double dash version and there you go uh, if you get something like that then you've got G++ installed congratulations you also have something called make and that's going to be very 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 useful in the upcoming tutorials as well so those are the two things we need to install for Windows to be able to use it in, in either Windows Command or Windows PowerShell. But that's going to take uh, far more work for Windows than it will be for Linux. So guys, let's go ahead and get that out of the way for you Windows users out there. Now keep in mind, there's going to be a step later on that we're going to have to be going to uh, system uh, preferences and all that and change some environment variables. Uh, if you don't do it right, guys, you can really uh, mess up your system. So I'm not going to be held responsible for anything that you mess up at all so the reason why I say that is because you don't have to do it this way you can also install something called an IDE that does all the compiling for you such as code blocks Visual Studio uh, a, com a suite that's called Qt that's Qt and you know those are my three recommendations but there are others such as NetBeans that you can install that'll you know do all that magical work for you but in my series I'm going to do everything from scratch so because I feel that it's uh, very useful to teach you guys how to do this because uh, it could be um, very useful in a professional environment say you, uh, you're in college and you're just starting a, a computer science major and you're going to need to know how to do it anyway so let's go ahead and set all that crap up so I'm going to open up a web browser here I'm just going to type in www.mingw.org and flash for a second there we go and keep in mind guys, I'll have these links in the description as well. And all you have to do is click this uh, download installer button here. And you sh should be able to start your download. Now keep in mind guys, um, I can't promise all these pl uh, things will be in the same place whenever you're watching this video. So it depends on how dated this video becomes. So like I said, click the installer button here and your download should start. Or after the countdown of course. But I've already got it. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, click this MinGW installer here. No, I'm not neither. I'm going to go right here, actually. And this should be the guy you should be getting. I'm sorry about that, guys. It should be mingw-getsetup.exe. Just go ahead and click that. And click install. Now, keep in mind where this installation directory is. You can choose the default directory in your C drive, or you can choose somewhere else. But my advice would be to copy this. Wherever you uh, choose to install it, just copy the directory, open up a notepad, and paste it. Like so, add a forward slash. 
or uh, backslash, excuse me, and then type the word bin. And we'll need that later. So we'll go ahead, click continue, and I've already got it installed, so you won't get this pop up uh, window most likely, but I'll go ahead and reinstall it for the purpose of the tutorial. And this will take a little bit of time, but it's not too terribly bad. But of course, it depends on your uh, internet speed and your PC specs. <laughs> Alright, we're already done. So we'll go ahead and click continue here. And you should get a bunch of white boxes over here. And all you have to do is uh, focus on this guy right here. This is your C++ compiler. This is what we need. So I'm going to click off on one of these other white boxes to show you how to basically check this. You just click into it like so and just click mark for installation. Now after you mark this for installation, just go to installation right here and click apply changes. And that guys is going to take a while, most likely. It depends, once again, on your uh, internet speed and your PC specs. So if you have to, pause the video just to kind of catch up with me. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and continue because we've got something complicated we got to do. Now this is what I was talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we need to um, update the system uh, variables to be able to use G++ in command, line, or um, PowerShell. So like I said, you can do this at your own risk. Um, we're going to go ahead and click into Windows right here, the Start menu that is, and we're going to start typing View Advanced, and you should see a view, view Advanced System Settings. Now, for you Windows 7 users out there, once again, um, if I haven't said so already, or if I have said so already, hang tight, I've got Windows 7 pulled up in VirtualBox down here. Um, I'll show you how to do this in Windows 7. So, once you get into System Properties, go into Environment Variables, and just scroll down your path variable right here and click edit and all you have to do in Windows 7 and Windows 10 it's very very easy you just click new and remember uh, well actually before you click new do you remember that a uh, directory I told you to copy and paste this is where we need that so go ahead and highlight this copy it again and then now you click new <laughs> and then you paste it there we go and you can click off of it if you want to just to see it added and then just simply click OK and you should be good guys now we'll go ahead and test that I'll use that later I'll just go ahead and minimize it for now and um, I'm going to open it in PowerShell because this is what you guys are going to see anyway and you, just like with Linux you can test it by going G++ 2 dashes version and there you are if you get something like that, congratulations, you have installed MinGW on Windows and you can now use it under Windows PowerShell. You can also use it in command line. So, whichever thing you want to use, and I'm showing command line because I, I know you can use PowerShell on Windows 7, but it's a little tedious to install PowerShell on Windows 7, with my experience. So, I, that's why I was wanting to reveal you can also use a Windows command. So, um, let's go ahead and open Windows 7 here, guys. And I'll show you how to add G++ to your system path in Windows 7. Yeah, okay. For a second there, I thought it froze up on me. So we'll go ahead and get into the Start menu here. And you just do the same thing you did in Windows. Or Windows 10 is you just type in View, Advanced, System Settings. And then go to your Environment Variables. And scroll down to you find Path and click edit and this is where it's going to differ you notice how these are separated by a semicolon these semicolons um, are what separate one program from another program <coughs> that allows uh, the programs to run in command lines so that semicolon is absolutely needed to be able to separate one program from the other so that all these are program directories that will execute in command line so what we have to do is we need to uh, grab MinGW and copy and paste that directory inside this thing. So simply what we do is we add our semicolon. And I know where my MinGW installation is already, so I'm just going to navigate to it. And there it is. You go to MinGW, go to bin. You can click up here just to turn it into something you can copy. Control C. And then. I'm going to simply paste it with control V 
because I know my cursor is on the right side of the semicolon. Make sure it's not on the left, ladies and gentlemen. And after that, you click OK. And now you're good. And we can go ahead and test that in command. I don't believe we have PowerShell. Yeah, we do have PowerShell. So I guess it would work in PowerShell. I'm going to find out. And it does. Okay, so we can use uh, G++ and uh, PowerShell as well as Command Line in Windows 7. But it sh I believe it's a different version of PowerShell in Windows 7 than it is in Windows 10. So guys, keep that in mind. And that about wraps it up. We've got one more thing we have to install, guys. If you look in the description, <coughs> sorry for the whistle there, um, we need to install one more program, and that is called GNU Make. So, I'm going to go ahead and delete this off my desktop. And, um, in order to get that, we need to be able to, uh, download something called GNU Win32 Make. So, I'm going to type in here, GNU Win32 And basically, that make program that I showed you before in Linux, this is the make program for Windows. So, yep, this is it. So it's gnuwin32.sourceforge.net forward slash packages forward slash make.htm. And like I said, this will be in the description below. And all you have to do is click this very first hyperlink right here. It says complete package except sources. Just click that and voila it'll start shortly you just uh, download that and execute it and I've already got it in the same folder you can just do this it should be around uh, it might be a different version number for you keep that in mind but this is the newest version as of um, Fe January yeah February 2018 so we got uh, make 3.81 that we're going to be installing here and it's a uh, fairly, well actually a lot more simple than uh, MinGW. So we're going to go ahead and accept that agreement and click next. And then, once again guys, go ahead and copy this just like you did with the MinGW because there is a slight chance we may have to add this to our uh, path variable just like we did with MinGW. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize this uh, notepad here. I'm going to say control V and do a, a backslash here and type bin as well. So we're going to need to uh, possibly copy that in our system path. So we're going to go ahead and click continue, or next. Uh, leave everything checked, that's perfectly fine, but if you want to uh, modify that, do so. And that's fine. That's fine by me. And just click install, and you're done. Now we can test this. We'll just do it in the command line here. You just type make, and that is how we know we need to add it to our system path because it will not run in command line. So, same thing we done earlier. Click environment variables. Now, we'll scroll down the path here. Just click edit. And remember what we uh, said to save a while ago? Here we are. You simply copy that. I, I push control C for that. I'm going to click new. Control V. Click off just to make sure everything's all hunky dory. And click OK. Now we're going to check and make sure that we copied the right one. Of course. So we're going to type command and we're always going to verify it. And there we are. So that should work in, all, in PowerShell as well as command line. So guys now we're all set. Um, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you um, how to create a make file, right quick, a, really, a very simple one, and get started on the basic essentials for C++. So guys, uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to think if I left anything out because that was a lot of steps for Windows. I think, I, I think I'm all good. I just want to make sure um, I'm not leaving anybody in the dark. But yeah, if you like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to, to like and subscribe. And if I made any mistakes, of course, uh, leave it in the comments below. And guys, I'd like to thank you for watching and happy coding.